Welcome back everyone to No DQ Video. That's right. The hiatus is over. No DQ Video is officially back. This is episode number 1001. And no, I'm not sure if Dean Malenko has approved it. But nonetheless, here I am. No DQ 1001. The road to 2000 episodes now begins. Thank you guys for your continued support and your patience. Now that No DQ Video is officially back, get the questions coming in, twitter.com slash Aaron Rift, using the hashtag PAIV1, and of course, please spread the word. Now, with that being said, let's get down to your questions. First one today comes from Alex Boney. What are your thoughts on the recent GFW slash TNA drama? Are they officially done at this point? I am not going to say anything about GFW slash TNA slash Impact Wrestling possibly being done because anytime somebody predicts the company's demise, they somehow manage to overcome the odds and stay in business. I joke about it year after year. TNA is going to outlive us all. I think they'll somehow manage to survive against all odds, to use a pay-per-view term from TNA. Now, there's a lot of talk about what's going to happen with GFW now that Jeff Jarrett has been sent home. There's this talk, renewed talk, about WWE possibly stepping in and buying GFW. Anthem potentially wanting to sell the company already, even though it's been less than a year since Anthem has taken over. WWE has made it clear they are only interested in the tape library, so they're not going to step in unless they can get a really good deal, just like when WWE bought WCW. GFW, if WWE doesn't step in, I think GFW slash TNA, whatever it's going to be called, and there's that whole story about Jeff Jarrett possibly still owning the rights to the name Global Force Wrestling and the company might have to go back to being TNA. The whole thing is such a mess, but that's TNA for you. I'm not sure what's going to happen. It's really hard to predict right now. It seems like it's constant drama and you never really know what the future is with this company. My guess is they'll continue on Pop TV, they'll tape their... 12 shows in 5 nights, and that pattern will continue for the foreseeable future. And beyond that, I really don't know. This one comes from Sean. What did you think, or what do you think, of the Vince McMahon appearance on SmackDown Live next week, and what will that accomplish from a storyline standpoint for Kevin Owens and Shane McMahon? It is huge because, as we all know, Vince does not appear on television all that often. So when he does, it is something fairly significant. Now, as I mentioned on No DQ Live, if you checked out that video, which you should, a lot of people have been enjoying the No DQ Live videos, and I will continue doing those, by the way. My guess is that Vince will show up and tell Shane that you have to make a decision. Either you are going to be running the brand, SmackDown, or you are going to be a competitor, you cannot do both. And Shane will ultimately choose to fight Kevin Owens. Maybe they'll keep the storyline going for another week or two where Shane says he's going to keep doing his job, but Owens keeps messing with him. And eventually Shane will say, screw it. Daniel Bryan can take over fully. I'm going to go get my hands on Shane. And that sets up Hell in a Cell. My guess is it will be a Hell in a Cell match. And, you know, with Vince being there, with all this TV time being dedicated to this storyline, it only makes sense at this point to do a Hell in a Cell match. So that's what I'm predicting at this time. This one comes from JJ Killer. What were your thoughts on the first Cena and Reigns promo? I did address this last week on No DQ Live, but I will say it was excellent. It was strong enough to get my butt in the Staples Center to watch this show live. I will be there in attendance for No Mercy. So, NoDQ.com, not only will we have the usual 
news and rumors heading into the pay-per-view and the usual coverage, but I will be there posting updates. I might even try to do match-by-match -match updates. I think I'm going to change things up this time. You know, usually we do the panel review videos, but since I'm in LA and I'm not going to have access to my Mac, I'm going to have to change things up. So I'm thinking maybe I will try to do my instant reactions, maybe after each match. I'm not sure because there's not much time, but I'm going to see what I can do and maybe do several videos there at the arena instead of the usual panel review video. It'll be different nonetheless. It, it will be something different for this one pay-per-view because I'll be there in person for it. Uh, but yeah, I thought it was a great promo. Cena was fantastic. Reigns, eh, not so much. But the second week, I think Reigns did better. And I'm really looking forward to the match. I think it's, it's a WrestleMania caliber match. After all, I said it should have been the WrestleMania main event, but WWE is doing it now instead. Um, so, whatever. More power to WWE if they have something better planned for WrestleMania. I'm not sure that they do, but we'll see. This one comes from Answer Me Aaron. Your wish is my command, sir. Cena vs. Reigns at a B pay-per-view? What is wrong with Vince? That's one of the few matches you can have as a big WrestleMania main event. Exactly. Now, we could potentially see a rematch at WrestleMania twice in a lifetime, just like Rock and Cena. Maybe Roman Reigns will get too cocky and he'll end up costing himself the match. I really hope WWE doesn't do the same storyline. Now, if Reigns wins at No Mercy, then I really don't see the need for a rematch. Um, there's no need for Cena to get his win back. If, if Cena's just doing this one match with Reigns, then Reigns should win and Reigns should get the rub, and my guess is that will be what happens, and maybe this is Vince's idea to have Reigns win at No Mercy and continue building him up as the top guy. So at WrestleMania, maybe, just maybe, the fans will take him a little bit more seriously and cheer him more. I don't know if it's ever going to happen. I really don't. My guess is Reigns will always get the tweener reaction, and he'll never be quite as over as Cena, even in the more casual cities because of what happened with The Undertaker. I think that really sealed Roman Reigns' fate as being, at best, a tweener for life. This one comes from Chris. Why does John Cena always make the best promos from his opponents look so weak like Roman Reigns and The Miz? Because John Cena is excellent on the mic and when you're that good of course, you're going to outshine everyone else, and they're going to look bad in comparison. I wouldn't say The Miz looked bad, because The Miz is great on the mic as well, and the stuff Miz did with, did with Maurice, I thought those segments were fantastic. And I think, if anything, Cena came off looking weaker than The Miz. Uh, but definitely with Reigns, I mean, that's the thing with the Cena and Reigns promo. I felt like Reigns was exposed as not being that charismatic, not being that good of a talker. He was forgetting his lines. It showed, his weakness showed that he's not really as strong of a talker as John Cena or maybe even a lot of the guys on the roster. Reigns' strength is just performing in the ring and looking the part, you know? He's playing the role of a tough guy and he looks like a tough guy and he acts like a tough guy in the ring and he performs well, so it works for him. But the fans are frustrated about his push, and I think they always will be. Unless Reigns develops this really interesting character, I don't see that changing, and I don't think WWE is going to change his character. So it's just going to be more of the same. It's going to be the same pattern as long as Reigns is on top. This one comes from Mr. Yuck. Do you see a 3MB reunion at some point, perhaps to feud with The Shield? I don't think so because the fans associate 3MB with a comedy act. That's what the fans see 3MB as, as this opening match comedy jobber group. I don't think it's going to happen. I don't think WWE wants to acknowledge 3MB if they can help it. You know, when JBL became the WWE Champion, they don't want to bring up when he was Justin Hawk Bradshaw. And 
when Triple H won the WWE title, they don't want to bring up that he lost to the Ultimate Warrior in a minute. You know, there's certain things you don't want the viewers to remember. And I don't think WWE wants fans to remember 3MB because WWE is trying to build up Mahal, build up um, Drew McIntyre, and not really build up um, Heath Slater, but at least with Mahal and McIntyre, WWE is trying to rebuild them and make them credible to the fans. And the last thing you want to do is bring up, hey, remember when these guys were jobbers and they were losing to everybody every week? Ha ha ha. You know, WWE is not going to do that. At least I don't think they will. This one comes from Ducky, 1 a.m. Do you think Drew McIntyre will win the WWE title down the line? A year ago, I would have said highly unlikely in all likelihood. But now, with Jinder Mahal winning the WWE title, and this is like the Coco Beware rule with the Hall of Fame, only this is the WWE title. I think that if Jinder Mahal can win the WWE title, anybody can win the WWE title. With McIntyre, I would not rule anything out. Right now, I would lean towards no, but I really think anything is possible now. WWE has shown that they can literally take anybody, no matter how far down on the roster they are, and make them the world champion. Jinder Mahal is that example. The bar has been set to a new low, and WWE will can and will put the title on anybody that they damn well please, because it's their company. WWE is the only game in town. There's no real other options unless you watch New Japan or Ring of Honor or some other indie promotion, but there's no real alternative in the United States. Um, WWE, they're, they're running pretty much the entire market in the United States, and they have control, and they can put the title on anybody. So, yeah, McIntyre has a chance. Rusev has a chance. Hell, James Ellsworth has a chance. I would say just about anybody has a chance at this stage of the game. This one comes from some nerd. All right. Is Jeff Hardy the last profitable Attitude Era star? Beyond the IC title, do you see more for Jeff in WWE? Again, I could see him potentially being WWE champion one more time. At least with Jeff Hardy... Under normal circumstances, you know, if we're just looking at a character's credibility and the, the, the way things used to be where you push the guy who's getting over with the fans and who's drawing money, Jeff Hardy, I think, could potentially be WWE Champion one more time. It's just a matter of will WWE invest in him at his age. I mean, he's, he's just approaching 40, I believe, so he could potentially have another four or five years left in him. Maybe he will have one more run as WWE Champion. I think a lot of that will depend on him and, and how much he's willing to invest. But also, you have to keep in mind that the Hardys are a nostalgia act. I said this before, if the Hardys are allowed to be broken again and, and explore new areas with their characters, then I think the chances will increase of Jeff and maybe even Matt getting a main event push in WWE in the next year or two. This one comes from Cruz. Cruz Bandicoot. Reports say Roman Reigns is the locker room leader, but who do you think gets the final say on things, Roman or John Cena? I would have to say neither. Just because somebody is a locker room leader doesn't mean that they have backstage pull to the point where they have creative control over who they put over. I think that's what you're implying, who has control creatively. I don't think either guy really has all that much. I think Cena does to a degree, but not a lot. At the end of the day, it's still Vince's decision what goes on in WWE. And as Vince even said on television, there is no one man bigger than the WWE. Um, we're not in that era anymore where guys can call the shots, you know, back in the 90s, Hulk Hogan and Shawn Michaels and the Click, these guys could run roughshod over their respective companies, and that's just not the case now. So even if Cena and Reigns have the respect of the locker room, doesn't mean that they have the political stroke to do whatever the hell they want. This one comes from Wrestling Fan 94. 
Where does Adolf Ziegler go from here? Adolf, eh? That's a great question because things seem to be up in the air right now about Ziegler's future uh, with his contract possibly being up soon. I'm not sure how much longer he has. There's been all these different reports and speculation about him leaving pretty soon. I'm not sure what's going on with him. Um, maybe he'll get a renewed push, but I don't know. I mean, Ziggler has been around for almost a decade now, very close. I mean, he was part of the Spirit Squad, so over a decade if you count that. But as the Dolph Ziggler character, he's been around for almost a decade now. And that that's a pretty long time for a TV character. And with WWE focusing on younger talent and new stars, trying to create new people and put new people in those those few spots that are available. Um, it just seems like Ziggler is is slowly being phased out. And I think it's unlikely that he gets a major push. And I think the odds are against him getting even a semi-main event push. Um, this could be the last couple months we see Ziggler in WWE. He might just be putting over some people on his way out. And they're just doing this storyline with him. So at least he has something before he leaves. Um, I'm not really sure what's going to happen with him. I think it could go either way at this point. This one comes from Henry Gomez. Hey Aaron, when do you see Carmella cashing in the Money in the Bank contract? I would hope that WWE waits on it a little bit now that Baron Corbin has unsuccessfully cashed in Money in the Bank. I would say give it a while, spread it out. Also, you have Natalia as a heel as the champion. So it really doesn't make much sense for a heel to cash in on another heel. It makes more sense for somebody like Naomi to win the title and then have Carmella cash it in on Naomi and set that feud up. Um, I think Carmella should be successful since Corbin failed. Otherwise, it'll, it'll water down money in the bank if you have both contract holders lose the same year. I just don't think that that's a good idea. I think Carmelo should successfully win the title. So whenever the babyface beats Natalia, and I think Natalia should have a decent run. Maybe even save Carmelo's win until WrestleMania sometime around there. This one comes from ADS Ami. What is your favorite Mean Gene and Ric Flair interview? My favorite one is where Ric Flair goes, Mean! Woo! Gene! Which is pretty much every interview that they did. But I would say the one right before Star K98, where Flair basically disrobed and threatened to go naked unless Eric Bischoff came out there. I think actually that was the night after Star K because Flair wanted the rematch. I think it was the night after. And Flair was going to handcuff himself to the ring, and he was just going nuts. Um, that was such a great promo. I mean, Ric Flair was unbelievably entertaining in that segment. And then a couple months later, even though this was when WCW was starting to go downhill, uh, the segment with, uh, with Piper and Flair and Gene Okerlund, that interview segment where Flair called himself the President of the United States, he was just losing his mind. He was the President of WCW. Okerlund had to correct him. Uh, that was a great one, too. So those would be my top two. That'll do it for episode number 1001 of No DQ Video. Please spread the word. Let everyone know No DQ Video is back. I will be doing more videos coming up shortly. I will be doing No DQ Live. I will keep doing No DQ News and maybe even an, an occasional Rift Rants. We'll have to wait and see when I got something I want to talk about and I don't want to wait to do a 20 minute video like this. I might just turn on the camera and do a short video. I'm going to keep trying different things with the channel. Hopefully you guys will continue to support the YouTube channel on NoDQ.com. I'd like to get the subscriber count up, so if you can, please share this video. Subscribe if you haven't already. I really do appreciate the support from you guys, and I will see you next time for 1002 of NoDQ Video.